Welcome to Recovery Talk Live, an ongoing open discussion about psychological, emotional, and spiritual recovery. Our mission is to deliver the message that those who are suffering with emotional trauma can recover. And now, here are your hosts, Don and Terry. Welcome to Recovery Talk Live with Don Maxwell and Terry Liddell. We here are here to share our journeys of recovery and able to, and, well, I always want to fix people, but in order to help you join and get on your areas and journey to recovery. Journey to recovery, that's Yeah, true. see, I'm so excited about fixing people that I lose my train of thought. Well, we're going to talk about safe people and boundaries. We talked about that a little, safe people. Yeah, a little people. bit before, but boundaries we're going to talk thick. about more, yeah, boundaries because boundaries have to do with really not know. fixing people. I know, I'm sweating as we speak, turning yes. on the lights and cameras. So, okay. we're going to talk about the fact that safe people have boundaries. Safe people. Safe people do have boundaries, mm -hmm. and they respect other people's boundaries. That's the key. Right. That is one of the keys for sure. That if I have a boundary, mm -hmm. and I'm a safe person, my boundary is going to be fairly strong, and it's going to be yes. pretty permanent. Yes, and as a recovering codependent, I have to say when someone has a strong boundary, it can come across because it's so unfamiliar to me as curt and hurtful. And, you know, even sitting in a therapist's office when they say, oh, our time's up and your heart's bleeding, it's mm -hmm. like, wow, gosh, they have a boundary. It's true. So it, learning to accept healthy boundaries when you haven't received them or given them is, it's hard. I'm squirming in my chair today. Well, here's, it's You're going to be squirmy one day. I'm going to get yeah, you squirmy well, we'll see. one day. So part but of the process we'll of, of safe people you're and boundaries squirming. is that you, you're looking at a situation in which that safe people aren't comfortable. No, safe people, they're not familiar depending on well, where you come from. I might, I, I'm fairly comfortable to people who know me and have been around me yes. most of the time. But I still know how to say no. I still know how to say that's not okay. I still know how to walk away. I have boundaries that are pretty significant uh, with my family, with my, right. with pretty much everybody that's in my life uh, who's been around me for a while has experienced my boundaries. But if I were an active alcoholic, you being mm -hmm. a recovering alcoholic, and as we all, you know, we're one and we can see it, mm -hmm. I wouldn't be too comfortable with you because no. I know you're seeing right through my stuff and mm -hmm. I am on the way out. Now, the, the interesting thing is, is that a good thing? Depends how, if you come across hitting them over the head at the beginning, they're out the door. Yeah, well, I don't hit them over the head in the beginning. But when no, you, you come in, the you visit, know, usually, yeah, yeah. yeah, second or third session. <laughs> but um, one of the things that is that you need to know, from my viewpoint, you need mm -hmm. to know what my boundaries are because if you don't know and you bang into them and there's an explosion, there's, there's, there's things in which I don't handle that well, then I'm not a safe person. So safe mm -hmm. people will tell you, this is, this is my boundary, don't do that. And if you continue to do that or you insist on doing that, then we don't have to do this anymore. So I am willing to walk away from people. I'm willing to walk away from situations that aren't healthy for that me. That's safe. But it's, it's difficult, and I, as we were sharing before we started shooting today, for me, I see my boundaries as a fence. And I get my fence, and my fence is sturdy, and it's you know, built in concrete. And one little trigger in my whole little fence crumbles. And I can rebuild it quicker than I did the first time, but doggone it. The pain of that, mm -hmm. it's rough. It is. So it's the maintenance, the maintaining of the boundaries is. Well, there's, there's two things. Once you I can, even identify them, which is a whole do, other thing. Do you build a thing. white picket fence with holes in it? Or do you build a wall that's pretty strong? You don't want to see my wall. Because my, <laughs> my wall, when I'm done, I'm done. When I recognize a repeatedly okay. unsafe behavior and I've had this happen, then the concrete wall goes up and you can't penetrate it because I recognize that your behavior, whoever the person is, that they, they're not capable of giving me safety. So I have to keep the wall. And okay. I've had, you know, relationships, I think of 10 years, friends I've had to let go of, you know, certain family members mm -hmm. where there's just got to be the wall because I can't change that person. Now, do you allow, is there a gate in your wall for somebody who would, if they worked on their stuff? If 
I actually have an example of this. Okay. And um, I'll just be outing myself right here. But hey, that's what we do here on Recovery Talk with Don and Terry. We out ourselves. We're completely vulnerable, and we have no boundaries ourselves in what we yeah. share okay. with people. All right. So hypothetically. So not hypothetically. So you're telling those people out there. I'm telling okay. everybody right now. So my mother is a person I haven't had a relationship with in many years. Okay. Um, not walking on the same road for various reasons. My boundary, after strong and tall. Years have gone by, and just in the last month, I haven't even shared this with anybody. I'm felt sing, and I'm not even Jewish, okay? Um, I recently, she had been put on my heart, and I restarted communicating with her. And, you know, it was okay because I received a couple of emails that were safe. They weren't the historical dysfunctional dance we had done together over the years. So, and I didn't even read her emails for years. And then finally, I started popping them open and it's like okay safe generic topics not re going to places that don't need to be revisited or relived or denied or you know accusations and we've actually had phone conversations in the last month twice that were pleasant but I, I might even say relatively okay, well, enjoyable but that's yeah. after years of the wall well so I guess there was a little gate yeah okay no that's important though oh because, you're giving me the face no okay no, I'm telling you that's oh. important because if if I just block people out because I'm I'm hurt. Well, okay. if you've been run over and you got tire tracks on part. your mark. But if I'm blocking back. everybody that hurts me, mm -hmm. one of the things is, is is we learned that I don't want the semi to run over me again. Right. So I build a wall. So, and if I keep building walls, nothing's getting through. Well, that's not okay either. So you are now an unsafe person for yourself. Wait, wait, wait. Let's okay. go back. If you keep, but there's appropriate times to build a wall, mm -hmm. let's just say a woman in an abusive situation and that guy's beating her, beating her, beating well, her, she's in the mom, hospital. Because that's a real life okay. thing for you. Okay? Well, that's, beating is real life for a lot of women. I let an abuse survivor go. Let's stick with your mom because right, that's a great thing. Mom. Okay, so mom, right. mom isn't emotionally safe for you. Well, you know, I hate for her to see this and say that, but there were mom years. Was not, mom was not emotionally safe for you. No. So you said, this is a boundary that I have. Yes. So you said, I'm going to build a wall. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, After the many problem years. with that is, is that if you, if mom represents other people in your life and you start building walls for everybody else who could get near you, pretty soon you become a isolated person. Yes, you cocoon. I right. call it cocooning. Yes, exactly. I've cocooned recently. Now, if I, I don't like have ways for me to get healthy, if I'm not, not working on myself, if mm -hmm. I'm not allowing some of those people who want to be safe, who've actually been working possibly on their stuff, to come back into my life, then I'm not a safe person for myself because I have totally isolated. Yes. Now, so the risk involved, yeah, here we go. This is the risk stuff. Oh, okay. okay. So risk is that I am willing to, to go find out, are you, have you been doing your stuff? And that's when you open up an email from your mom and went, okay, that one works. All right, so mm -hmm. we could do this. Now, it doesn't mean that your wall fell down. Notice the body language. I'm freaking out. Okay. Yeah. It doesn't mean that your wall fell down. All right. Okay. It says, I'm thinking about it. Okay. You look okay right now, but there's still going to be some awareness on your part. There's still, you're still looking for the owie. You're still looking for the pain. So well, you're, you're risking. Well, you looking for the things that are going to take you out because you so don't want to be taken out again. Because you got the triggers. Okay. Right. All right. right so right, let's right. go. So. But the fact that you're willing to risk says yes, a lot. It does. All right. You okay so far? I'm relatively tracking it with you on some level. Okay. So, so well, the, the idea is oh. that, okay, you have been. But I have to process because I'm getting overwhelmed. Okay. So if we're going back to the mother situation, right. and we had this for all these years, and I've opened the emails over the last year, and I'm like, oh, Oh, no triggers, no triggers, no, mutually no triggers. From mm -hmm. me, I have no anger, no hostility, honestly, toward her anymore. Too many step studies, too much recovery, I'm over that stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's appearing she's at the same place for whatever reason. Right. This mutual trust is being earned and reciprocated. Exactly. Because we're both not Taking triggering the each other. Taking and now if mom... Based on experience, not on what other people are, have said. Because no, over the years, I've had a relative say, oh, what, this is different now. Okay, and then now I go it, and experience it, and here. it's not. Because here's the thing. You said what I think is, a, is a very important. Yes. Okay, you, there's a mutual-ness, a mutual respect, a mutual caring. You guys are trying to work it out. 
Now, if mom gave you one of those, sent you one of those emails, yes. what would you do with it? One of the bad ones. The bad ones? It's the first word that I see we're going in the wrong direction, it's delete. Now, would you, would you send mom one back and say, mom, this is nope. not okay? Not doing the dance. I stepped out of those dances. No, that's not the dance. I stepped out of the dance. That's not the dance. I don't want to do that dance. Here. Get back over here. I have a boundary. boundary. My boundary is I'm not doing that dance anymore. Okay, so you tell mom don't do that. No, because then I'm fixing her. No, you tell and mom don't do that. And I need codependent sobriety. No. Yes. No. Dude. No. Yes. How You're asking people... me to swim in a toxic pool. No, I'm not. Yeah. Why don't you just tell the woman being beaten? Just see if he punches Wait, you well, once. Well, we're back over in mom's house. I'm not going over there. With the... Emotional abuse can be just as okay. bad as physical. But if you don't have boundaries. I've experienced stop, both. My oh. If you don't have boundaries, mm -hmm. if you don't say, Mom, you're crossing the line, mm. okay, don't do that, stay over here, <sighs> then you built the wall back up again, and there's, how does she get back to you? Yeah, I kind of like the wall. I got that part. Because it keeps you safe. No, it doesn't. Yes, it does. No, it doesn't. I am not responsible for somebody else backsliding, Terry. Who said backsliding? Who because said you're if you're going back into the toxic pool and trying to pull me under with this stupid chain around my neck, I'm not going down with you anymore. I don't care who you are. S sink alone. I don't mean my mother in general in life. So when I told my mother, you don't get to treat me this way, and she would try. I've done that, yeah. And she would say... I'm going to treat you this way, and I'd go, then I'm not playing. Right. Okay. You don't play, I don't dance. And I said to her, if you want to have a relationship with me, this is how you're going to do it. Okay. And she said, Boundary. I don't like that. And I said, well, then I'm okay with that. And my mother said, along with a whole flock of people in my recovery journey, Yes. If you want to, if you want to be around me, this is how you're going to do it. I did that with my mother years ago. Okay. Now, if mom sends you an email, mm -hmm. one of those emails. <laughs> she should accept my boundary initially. Okay. Yeah. So think about what you're doing now. And what you're giving her the opportunity to be healthier because she may not know. And this is one of the things that, that in, in many ways, she may not know what's going on. She may not really know she's triggering you because you guys have had a year's worth of reasonably healthy stuff. Well, or my mom or anybody else, and I'm not saying this about my mom, may That's not true. care if they're triggering you, if they get stuck and on they their might. own thing. It's, I think it's a fine line of, when, of saying, you know what, we're going back into the toxic pool and recognizing maybe someone's going backsliding into their area, mm -hmm. and it's not happening with my mother, but in general, and not being willing to drown with it. Okay, now let me ask you a question. What's a boundary? A boundary? Well, we just looked that up on dictionary.com. Hopefully our soon-to-be sponsor, unless Webster's calls us first, just saying, a limiting or binding binding line. See, I don't like that one. Well, I didn't like it so either, I have a different the only one. option they gave us. And I have a different one. have to take one. a break in a minute. It's so a, give us the definition. I do. It's a really good one. Okay. Psychological, emotional, or physical barrier that when crossed, emotional. there's a consequence. Okay, well, then I don't have to write that down. I can remember it. Yeah, but so I, I don't process. live with you. I have to have it with me, so I'm going to have to write I'll it down. It to you. Okay. So, psychological, emotional, or physical barrier that when crossed, there's a consequence. Okay. All right, I, I, I can accept that, but I, we're going to, after the break, we're going to have to talk about the wall a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes you can hear, like from relatives or friends, whoever your wall is up against, oh, they're making tremendous progress, mm -hmm. and they do fake well with mm -hmm. others and then you so you open that door and you know put your feet in the water and take a little taste and find out it's crap let's just you know what i mean and that they might be saying well, the right thing, thing to thing, others there's a thing in early recovery and trying there's to a pull thing, you down there's a thing that i that we all get trapped in mm -hmm. and that's we think that people are making progress and we we kind of can step off um into in back into the toxic pool mm -hmm. um too fast who thinks we're making progress? People think they're making progress. Sure. I'm, I'm on the fourth step. I'm making progress. I'm on the fifth step. Okay. This, I'm on the 12th I'm, I'm so step. So after the break, we're going to step right back into this conversation and continue with this rough, rough topic of boundaries. We'll be back in a minute. You're watching Recovery Talk Live. If you would like to contact Don and Terry, please send your email to recoverytalklive at gmail.com. 
If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or insight, we'd love to hear from you. Your identity will remain anonymous and your name will not be revealed on air. Again, send your email to recoverytalklive at gmail.com. Welcome back to Recovery Talk Live with Don and Terry, where we are putting up walls and talking about boundaries. Yes, we are. And Terry was kind enough to time out five seconds of compassion for me. Thank you so very much. It's what I do. Oh, I hope it didn't cost you too much, buddy. All right. Now, this is an uncomfortable situation. What I'm trying to communicate to you, you're saying you have a wall, and sometimes the walls keep you safe. Yes. And you don't let me visit physical violence as a hypothetical, and I always go there because a lot of women misinterpret I'm not, this type of I'm not of against thing. that, but the, the example that we were yes. started with was your mother. Now, if you want to, are you okay with where we were? Well, yes, I just, I just always, even when I'm sitting in a church service, if I hear a pastor talk about forgiveness and mm -hmm. they, you, you know, in, in biblical forgiveness, I am like writing them the note, you didn't, and you forgive, you don't, as an abused woman, open the door and let your abuser come Continue. back in the house. Right. Y you know, trust has to be earned. So I always, right. you know, make sure there's a caveat for people who could mistake what we're saying. Like, well, don't, if, if you're you somebody's want, if pounding you, want, you physically, okay. I taught domestic don't violence leave classes. Okay, I just always feel like that needs okay. to be touched on I taught on them for 10 years, briefly. Okay. 11 years. Then and, put it out there. And, and one of the things that we would talk about is the respect of person. Mm -hmm. And that starts with yourself. Yes. So the more respectful I am of me, mm -hmm. the more respectful I'm going to be, be of others. So one of the things is safety for the woman or for the abused party is paramount for me. Okay, that's, I just want to make sure okay. that's an understanding because your wall with the gate can fit a fist. Um, no. Yes. The, no. Yes, it can. Unless you have seen long-term, you know, recovery okay. over a time that was safe, you don't want to open that door emotionally or physically if you, if you know you're still at risk. And you're not strong enough, and it could take but you out. We're, yeah, but we're talking about two different animals here. No, because I think emotional, I can bring you women who would say their verbal abuse was worse than their physical. I know well, when I Well, when I taught classes, the number one reason that men were in the program mm -hmm. was not physical abuse. The number one reason was emotional and verbal abuse. That the men per perpetrated on women or that was perpetrated on the men? Yes. Yes to both? Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, here's the problem with that, is that you had two people who did not have any boundaries at all. But safety is always first. Okay, but safety for the, for the wife or for the woman and yes. the children, to me, is number one. Okay, now we can be friends. Okay. All right. That's important. Because that's it. Okay. I, don't, I mean, there's a whole... Number one. You know. Okay, number one. Slew of things. But that doesn't, that doesn't take responsibility away from either party. No, but safety's first. Safety's Which first. Which you can get all these other nice recovery things as long as everybody's okay. safe. Now, let's, think, let's go back to boundaries. All right. Okay. Boundaries are that if I care about you, how do I treat you? Well, some people like crap. If I care about you, how do I treat if you? If you care about me and a safe person, and you're a safe person, then you're mm -hmm. respecting me as a person, my feelings, thoughts, and actions. I'm respecting yours. Mm -hmm. And there's not that... You know, I'm, I'm not only, usually I think somebody's taking themselves out and then people around them tend to follow, go voluntarily or get sucked okay, under. Okay, so then let's go back to the definition we used in the, in the last segment was okay. safe people care about you, but they may not be comfortable because when you tell people the truth, yeah. sometimes that's very uncomfortable. So oh, what wow. you do with that in many ways is, is what happens in domestic violence. Um, I tell you something because I care about you. I don't do a good job in doing it. You as a therapist, you as the no, no, abuser, no, no, no. who are you right now? The parties, the, the two party. people. Okay. okay. All right. That, okay. So you, you got a situation here where you have two people who are telling each other things. They, the delivery system sucks. The thing explodes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And even though they still care about each other, because the most, the scariest call for a police officer is what? Domestic violence? Because yes, because somebody could be killed. No. Yes, they could. Okay, Did you not, not watch the OJ case? What? That's not why it's scary. Why? Because they don't know what to because expect. Because when a, an officer shows up, he becomes the focal point of the no. two people. 
Hmm. That's why they send two cops now and they split them up. Oh, do so, they? I don't, yeah, I have they, not they had that experience. Up. Because the, the question is they got to calm people down and they want to find out what's going on. And these two people who are going like this in the beginning, mm -hmm. as soon as the cop shows up, go like this. See, I, have, I don't have physical well, the marital abuse well, you experience. Need, yeah, okay. but well, then careful because if you bring it up. No, I, I just, I'm just saying safety's first. When you see okay. women who have been pounded up, okay. I, now, I'm I don't telling like you it. is that if you look at that thing, safety for the kids, for the wife, mm -hmm. number one on my list. Okay, then, okay, then we're that's good. not going to go. But. We There's can been coexist. some very unsafe mm -hmm. activities on both parties. True. So the true, idea true, is, true. okay, that, that we have to build some healthy boundaries. Mm -hmm. we, have to, we have to teach both parties how to relate to each other. Because the kids, and this is the tough part, the kids learn how to be a father and a husband and a wife and a mother from the parents. I believe as a parent, what you say is not as important as what you're doing because what you are living, the manual to what your children will do. That's it. Yeah. That, absolutely. So we have a, when we look at these kinds of things, that's why boundaries to me and safe people are so significant because in my journey of recovery, mm -hmm. my sobriety, I'm around people who are safe for me. They care about me. They want what's best for me. And sometimes they have to tell me some things I don't want to hear. That. I, hello. Okay. Yeah. So now, when they tell one. me something I don't want to hear, my normal reaction is to go, well, like you know anything, or tell them, you know, go crazy, et cetera, et cetera. But what I've learned is that if I, if I think they're safe people and they do care about me, I can listen yeah, do and do something with it and question and say, okay, how can I change? Because they want, they care about me. So, Safe people are willing to risk with you. Safe people are yes. willing to help you with boundaries. Safe people actually set boundaries because they say, I won't tolerate that if you're going to be around me. But these are people that you build long-term trust with that you know you can trust, the safe people. I mean, you've, takes, you've built some level of trust with them where you can they've demonstrated receive it over a and not get angry because it's they, like, shoot, they're speaking the truth. Well, I didn't say I didn't get angry. No, but you receive it versus just saying, you know, Flipping them off or something. No, it's true. Yeah, because you know so, it hurts. So when you look at this, because boundaries are very different. Not that things. as Christians we flip people off, but I'm just saying hypothetically. Oh, hypothetically. Yes, oh, okay. I'm not saying okay. anybody would actually do that. I'm All just right. saying in your mind you're going. I see. You know, okay. Well, that's a good thought. Keep some ethics around us. Yeah. So when you look at that, that's the thing. When you look at your mom, like you say, "Mom, I love you," mm -hmm. but these are my boundaries. Right. Now, if you want to behave in essence, if you want to act in a manner that's safe for me, right. then I'm willing to risk with you. If you're yes. not willing to do that, then mom, we can't do this. Right. And, and for me, I'm coming to a reemergence with my mother. In reality, not everybody has that. Some people may never be safe. Exactly. And that's unfortunate. I think it's a huge, I think it's a huge it's thing that, that there's going to be some people in my life um, that I had to walk away from. Oh, I have I, friends, even friends mm -hmm. who just well, become I'm not, I'm, I'm emotionally unsafe. You don't have any? No. Oh, I'm sorry. I know you can rent some. Can I rent them? Mm -hmm. I rent a friend, yes. Colin will be your friend. Oh, i got to pay him, though. I know. You already told me. Okay, forget it. So just part of this, we'll, we'll almost, get him later. Yeah. But the process of, of setting boundaries and being healthy, it's very interesting because as you become a safe person, mm -hmm. you will attract safe people. Safe people. Right. But I still think there's a time of cocooning where people, unsafe people will try to put their agendas on you, mm -hmm. their perspectives, what they believe to be their truth from their perspective on you. And if, even if it's someone you love and who's been on your journey for a while, sometimes a safe person can become an unsafe person if they have a personal agenda. Well, they weren't a safe person in the beginning. But, yeah, I understand what you're saying. But here's Maybe an interesting thing. I'm going to teach you a word. Okay. I mean, it's a very difficult word. I know what it is. Which one is it? No. No, that's the one. <laughs> and I know the codependent sentence. No it's is the, a complete sentence. It's a round sentence. one. No with this, is a complete yeah, sentence. Yeah, yes. no, no, Jerry, no. No, that's it. Okay. So when you look at that, because th here's the thing that's, that's most significant in, the, in, in this journey. Yes. It's called practice. <sighs> yes. What do you practice? And whatever that is. Yes is what you tend to do. 
Because practice and practice and practice. And when I was learning to play golf, horrible sport. Um, my I clubs, played golf in college. I yeah, thought golf was sport. fun. And my clubs well, there the goes car. our golfing weekend. <laughs> yeah, so. All right. So the process is that in golf, the, they said, we want you to go practice. Mm-hmm. And it was like, okay, you I can do that. You hit him with the club. And he said, but I want you to practice the right things. Meaning the things you were weak on. No. No. Things, he said, this is what I want you to practice. I want you to practice. And I had some, some basic steps. Practice like stance, um, setup, um, club angle, you know, was the club open or closed? I mean, there's just some things that the guy said. So when you go through this ritual, make sure you're doing it correctly. Because mm. whatever you practice mm. is what you're going to learn. pattern. Mm-hmm. So if I'm practicing bad things, things that are not beneficial to me, things that are hurtful to me, I'll get good at it. Get comfortable with it yes. also. Yes. Okay. So in, in the process of setting boundaries, it's going to be uncomfortable because I'm going to have to do things that I wouldn't normally do. Wow, this is exhausting. It is. It's a lot of work. I'm exhausted. It is. It's a Shoot, lot of work. Good thing I don't drink anymore. I'd need one because this yeah. is a rough topic. So, this is. Well, it's tough for everybody because in, in, in when you're setting up boundaries, you, people are going to push against them. I, I know, and then you have to get stronger with it, and mm-hmm. it's, there's conflict. Boundaries. That's why be a no is a hard word for you. No is a. It's hard when someone knows your weaknesses. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean, and they know exactly if, if your wall is up, mm-hmm. how to get in the They're back door. For the gate. Right. Yeah, exactly. That's why it's better to have no gate. Thank you so much for joining You're us today. You're welcome. Yeah, it's it's uh-huh. better to have no gate and keep right. your wall up. Uh-huh, yeah. Because the, the ones who shouldn't will break the thing yeah. down, man. Yeah, okay. So then what you're telling me is you'd prefer to be an unsafe person for everybody. No, I didn't That's say that. Saying. No, I'm saying you can't let in toxicity, but people, you cannot cause people to change. So if they're not going to change, you have to keep okay. yourself would you like safe. Okay, would you be willing to, would you be willing to consider something? All right. Would you be willing to consider the fact? I need a painkiller after this show, man. Okay. Uh, the, really, I was the. Would you be willing to consider I don't discriminate. the concept that possibly the <sighs> only way you can change another human being is to? We can't change another human change being. yourself. Yourself, yes. You only now, change yourself. Now, if I change myself, guess what you have to do? Well, if you want a relationship with me, you have to adapt, comply. It's a. You, you, it's okay if you say change. Change, okay. okay. But I don't want to so, fix, see? I, I have didn't to, say fix. I said change. Uh, yeah. Okay. So if I choose so join me to in this reality to you in a manner that was different than it was six months ago, you're going to have to make a decision. What are you going to do? Do you want to not have a relationship with me? Or do you want to move your relationship? Do you want to change your relationship? Do you want to, to engage in yes. a different way? Well, you have your power. We're, I'm powerless. You're powerless. If we have a problem with someone, to have them change. That's that person's decision. It's true, but I can change how I treat them. I have a boundary. I don't. Right. Go, um, but you really can't make quickly, them respect really, it. Don't have to. I know. It's not about respecting it. It's I put it out there. They decide what they want to do with it, and I'm going to do what I'm going to do. If you don't respect my boundaries, Mm -hmm. then I have a choice in how to relate to you. And it may be, we're done. It's tough. And I don't think we're we're not going to be done with this boundary stuff. This is going to be, this is going to be an ongoing topic. It's going to come up. I have to go to Costco and get the large bottle of painkiller. So I think we're all done for today. So could we be done? We can be. I'm so grateful we're done. Say goodbye. We'll participate on our boundaries. Thank you for joining us today on Recovery Talk Live with Don and Terry. We're going to go take a nap. See you. Have a great day. (laughs) You've been watching Recovery Talk Live. If you have questions, comments, concerns, or insight, we'd love to hear from you. Send your email to recoverytalklive at gmail.com. That's recoverytalklive at gmail.com. Look for new episodes every week and thanks for watching Recovery Talk Live.